Unless you live underground, even if you live in the heaving throng of humanity under a nearly completely raised night sky thanks to light pollution and the colossal waste of energy that happens every single night across cities across the world, space is still available to you. Cities present huge challenges to capturing space, but narrowband filters that cut through light pollution and brighter targets like the sun, moon and planets mean that just about everybody across the whole planet, including you, has access to space. In this episode, I'm announcing three exciting new products that will help you in your journey from wherever you live into the far reaches of outer space. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you're watching Star Stuff. G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here from the Byron Bay Observatory. Do you love space? Do you love when boxes of stuff show up? The good thing about being a YouTuber is that vendors want me to share with you all the cool stuff that they've brought out, which is great because I'm happy to do that, especially when it's stuff I love. Full disclaimer, not being paid. The show sponsor is actually Bintel. Bintel are a Sydney astronomy vendor and they will help you get all of this stuff if you need it. Check them out at www.bintel.com.au. But in the meantime, I'm gonna start unwrapping these boxes and show you some of the best new products in astronomy for 2022. I know you love a bit of gear pornography. <laughs> Okay, the first cab off the rank is the QHY533M, the hotly anticipated mono version of the IMX533 sensor from Sony. And it's been hotly anticipated because I think this is potentially the 1600mm killer. And I say that not only because this is a 14-bit camera, but because of the price point, which makes this one of the best cameras that you can get in that price range. Uh, but what's really interesting is the chip itself. With a lot of Astro, we've been very used to having kind of rectangular shaped chips, which is fairly natural for most cameras. Uh, but you'll notice on this one that the aspect ratio is actually perfectly square. So all that vignetting that you normally crop off lazily in your images, uh, this chip does that for you because you can just center that square in the center of your image circle and you should have less vignetting on the corners. Uh, it is 3000 by 3000 approximate pixels. Uh, so again, perfect square. And the pixel size is pretty small, I think 3.8 something. So same sort of small pixels as the new generation CMOS cameras have, uh, but a smaller chip as well. So the image frame of view will be quite tied in. I'm gonna give this a good run and uh, test it out. But for around that price point, I think this is the budget camera of the moment. Uh, really exciting release from QHY. Okay, next up is a product I'm super excited about it. I didn't even know this was uh, launched. I didn't hear anything about it. Uh, but I've been sent this fantastic Dew heater ring for Celestron telescopes, uh, Schmidt Cascarines or Rasses. Uh, this Dew heater is a ring that sits right over the front glass of your OTA, so it looks really clean. You're not going to have any bands uh, stretched around the OTA or anything like that. It's going to have the Celestron branding right up the top. It's going to look like a normal telescope, uh, but it all plugs in to a Dew controller. Now the Dew controller is really interesting because it has a thermistor inside and a humidity sensor that will detect changes in the temperature and humidity so that you're only running that Dew control as you need it. And if you're like me in the past, you've run outside to the telescope when you notice your HFR numbers are getting a little low, the stars are getting a little bit bloated and you shine a torch down the top of your telescope and you see that it's all fogged up and then you grab the nearest hairdryer and give it a bit of a blow off that stuff's super annoying especially if you're trying to automate your process or you just want to have a hassle-free run over a night time having an automated system here where the fog and the dew can be removed from the glass without you really having to do anything 
is a really, truly good upgrade for your equipment. And the fact that it's so tightly integrated into this Lestron setup makes this a perfect thing for my scope. Uh, I'll be installing this 11 inch dew heater ring and I have an eight here as well. They come in all sorts of different sizes for whatever sort of Celestron telescope you have. So well done Celestron. Again, this is something I'm gonna be using. Man, this is like Christmas. Talk about a kid in a candy store. This is like Christmas if Santa was a huge dork like me and knew exactly what I wanted. Now, the next cab off the rank is the Star Adventure. There is an upgrade already to the Star Adventure. It's called the Star Adventure GTI. And the cool thing about this, it now includes the one thing that Star Adventure has been missing this whole time, which is go-to functionality. Uh, this can be connected to a SynScan hand controller uh, right on the body here. So you can use a hand controller for go-tos, uh, which makes things a lot easier. You can get the tripod separately, uh, they've sent me this EvoGuide 50ED uh, guide scope by the looks of it. And this little tri-peer attachment to go on the tripod, which is super cool. You'll have all the features of the polar alignment built into the hand controller. Super handy for us here in the Southern Hemisphere. We don't have a pole star, so we can't use the polar scope and stuff like that. Uh, so having the hand controller here makes a huge difference to us. How cool is this? This took me about five minutes to set up. I, did, I haven't even read the instructions yet. So let me show you the changes here. Now on the old Star Adventurer, this was a panel here that you could take off for the batteries. Uh, obviously we need these ports now for SynScan and all that. We've still got the polar scope down here and we have a number of ports up here. We've got the auto guider, hand control, the USB power and snap for camera control. Uh, plus the on switch and the on light indicator. But let's go deeper. We've got not one, but two banks of power. This is twice as many batteries as they had last time. Expect more from me on all three of these products shortly. Uh, I'll do some more in-depth videos about each of them. I just wanted to introduce you guys to three of the newest, most exciting products out there in astronomy for this year. Uh, winter's coming up here in Australia, so we've got Milky Way season coming up. This will be perfect for that. Uh, I'm looking forward to testing the 533 Mono and finally the Celestron Dew Rings. Looking forward to installing those and seeing how they go. So not reviews as such, but hands-on testing. I'm just gonna play with them and give you my honest opinion about everything, as I always do. Anyway, you've been watching Star Stuff. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die.